In this video, we're going to be talking about verbal communication or the words that we speak. Verbal communication is made up of language or language is a system of arbitrary symbols. I say arbitrary because really it, the meaning of the symbols depends on the person. For example, if I say dog, many of you may be thinking of very different things depending on your backgrounds. Maybe you had a dog growing up and it was like a small little chihuahua. Or maybe you had a really big dog growing up. If I say dog, probably everyone that I say the word dog to has some sort of different picture in their head, a different meaning for what that is. Not just the meaning like of the word, the dictionary meaning, but we also have the connotative meaning of a word, more the emotional meaning to it. What, what does that mean, dog? Ah, I get like a warm, fuzzy feeling when I talk about dogs. That's the connotative meaning of the word dog, whereas the denotative meaning is the dictionary term for the word dog. Because of those two meanings, you can see why language can also be fairly arbitrary. Um, obviously, language is an agreed on set of symbols. So we know that a dog is a you know, four-legged barking animal. But again, when we get into like the little details, it gets a little bit trickier. That's why it's always recommended to use something like concrete words over ab abstract terms. So an abstract term would be the word dog. Again, we all might have a very different picture in our head of what a dog is. If I use a more concrete term though, and I say German Shepherd, now we have a much better idea specifying that breed of what that type of dog looks like. I could even be more specific and say like Chocolate Lab, okay? Now I've got a really much more specific picture in my head of what kind of dog it is that you're referring to. And if you think about it, a real life example related to that, if I say the dog chased me down the street, you might picture this like gigantic dog chasing me when in reality, maybe it was like a little three pound chihuahua chasing me, okay? You know, it's a little bit different meanings to that story. Um, so being more concrete, meaning more specific, concrete would be more terms that would be very tangible versus abstract, which would be terms that would be a lot more ambiguous. Another example with that is the word ball. If I say ball, that's again a pretty ambiguous term. That's a very abstract term. Like we, yes, ball is a tangible object, but there are so many different varieties of a ball. But if I say basketball, that's much more concrete. Now you know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. So when you are speaking to others, using more concrete terms really helps with the understanding and getting that your message to be effective across the way. Another really interesting thing about verbal communication is called the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis. And this really explains how we create meaning um, from words. And so the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis says that we only know things in the world that we have words for. And so things that we can't label or we don't have a word for just are kind of ignored. The way this was explained to me in college, the professor that explained it to me basically said, this is a good thing because otherwise we would be so hung up on the tree in front of us and all the little intricate details that we had labels for that we would never be able to get past it because it would be so fascinating to us. All the different things we could pick out about that tree. This is a very kind of philosophical concept. Let me try to give you a more real world example though of how this works. So my oldest son, when he was um, just, you know, a little bit, uh, probably about two years old. He, um, I, I vacuumed one day and I'm the first to admit, I probably don't clean the house as often as I should, especially when he was awake. Cause you know, I was always chasing after him and he said, mama mo. Okay. Mama mo. And I was trying to figure out why does he think I'm mo? Oh, he thinks I'm pushing a lawnmower mowing because that's what he knew. So he's seen, you know, me or probably not me, uh, probably his daddy mow the lawn. And when he saw me vacuum, that was kind of that same motion. And so in his head, he was trying to connect. This is something new. I haven't really seen this before, but I can't put a label on it because again, I, I don't have a word for it. So he came up with that idea of that my vacuuming was actually mowing. And so that's where he came up with that. So that's kind of an example of that as to how we are able to, our, our reality is really dictated by the words that we have in our language. The world is dictated by language. That's also why sometimes it's really hard to learn a second language, especially as adults. As kids, when they're so malleable like that, you know, like I said, he could pick up on that mo, he could pick up on another language when they're that little. They usually say under five is the best time to learn another language. 
when we get older, a lot of languages have words that we can't directly translate. And we have a very difficult time trying to conceptualize the meaning of that when there's not a direct translation. And so that can make it very difficult to learn a, a second language. So that is really a good brief overview of verbal communication and what verbal communication and language and symbolic